Hello everyone, here are videos for civil engineering. Welcome to the channel Amazing Civil Engineering Studies. Here we have different videos on all topic of civil engineering. Please subscribe and press bell icon, like and share as many as possible. In this video we will learn about Slab Different types of slab, with their advantages and disadvantages, types of loads on a slab and minimum thickness of slabs Slabs Slab is an important structural element which is constructed to create flat and useful surfaces such as floors, roofs, and ceilings. It is a horizontal structural component, with top and bottom surfaces parallel or near so. Commonly, slabs are supported by beams, columns, concrete or steel, walls, or the ground. The depth of a concrete slab floor is very small compared to its span. Different Types of Slabs in Construction There are 16 different types of slabs in construction. Some of them are outdated and Many of them are frequently used everywhere. Flat Slab Conventional Slab 1 One-Way Slab 2 Two-Way Slab Hollow Core Ribbed Slab or Hollow Core Slab Hardy Slab Waffle Slab Dome Slab Pitch Roof Slab Slab with arches Post-tension slab Pre-tension slab Cable suspension slab Low roof slab Projected slab Grad slab slash slab on grade Sunken slab Miscellaneous slabs room chaja or loft kitchen slab lintel sunshade slab Flat slab The flat slab is a reinforced concrete slab supported directly by concrete columns or caps. Flat slab doesn't have beams so it is also called as beamless slab. They are supported on columns itself. Loads are directly transferred to columns. In this type of construction, a plain ceiling is obtained thus giving attractive appearance from an architectural point of view. The plain ceiling diffuses the light better and is considered less vulnerable in the case of fire than the traditional beam slab construction. The flat slab is easier to construct and requires less formwork. This is one of the types of concrete slabs. The thickness of the flat slab is minimum 8 or 0.2 m. Flat slabs are used at to provide plain ceiling surface giving better diffusion of light. Easy constructability with the economy in the formwork. Larger headroom or shorter story height and pleasing appearance. This kind of slabs are provided in parking. Flat slabs are generally used in parking decks, commercial buildings, hotels or places where beam projections are not desired. Advantages of Flat Slab It minimizes floor-to-floor -floor heights when there is no requirement for a deep fall ceiling. Building height can be reduced. Auto Sprinkler is easier. Less construction time. 
it increases the shear strength of the slab. Reduce the moment in the slab by reducing the clear or effective span. Disadvantages of flat slab In flat plate system, it is not possible to have large span. Not suitable for supporting brittle, masonry, partitions. Higher slab thickness There are four different types of concrete flat slabs. Slab without drop and column without column head, capital. Slab with drop and column without column head. Slab without drop and column with column head. Slab with drop and column with column head. Conventional slab. The slab which is supported on beams and columns is called conventional slab. In this kind, the thickness of slab is small whereas depth of the beam is large and load is transferred to beams and then to columns. It requires more form work when compared with the flat slab. In conventional type of slab there is no need of providing column caps. The thickness of conventional slab is 4 or 10 cm 5 to 6 inches is recommended if the concrete will receive occasional heavy loads, such as motor homes or garbage trucks. Conventional concrete slabs are square in shape and has a length of 4 m. Reinforcement is provided in conventional slab and the bars which are set in horizontal are called main reinforcement bars and bars which are set in vertical are called distribution bars. Based on length and breadth of conventional slab is classified into two types. One-way slab Two-way slab one-way slab One-way slab is supported by beams on the two opposite sides to carry the load along one direction. The ratio of longer span, L, to shorter span, B, is equal or greater than 2, considered as one-way slab. In this type slab will bend in one direction i.e. in the direction along its shorter span. However minimum reinforcement known as distribution steel is provided along the longer span above the main reinforcement to distribute the load uniformly and to resist temperature and shrinkage stresses. In general length of the slab is 4 m. But in one-way slab one side length is 4m and another side length is more than 4m. So it satisfies the above equation. Main reinforcement is provided in shorter span and distribution reinforcement is provided in longer span distribution bars are cranked to resist the formation of stresses. Example Generally all the cantilever slabs are one-way slab. Chajas and verandas are a practical example of one-way slab. Two-way slab Two-way slab is supported by beams on all the four sides and the loads are carried by the supports along both directions, it is known as two-way slab. In two-way slab the ratio of longer span, L, to shorter span, B, is less than 2. The slabs are likely to bend along both the directions to the four supporting edges and hence distribution reinforcement is provided in both the directions. In this kind of slab, the length and breadth of the slab are more than 4 m. To resist the formation of stresses distribution bars are provided at both the ends in two-way slab.
These types of slabs are used in constructing floors of multi-storied building. Hollow core ribbed slab or hollow core slab Hollow core ribbed slabs derive their name from the voids or cores which run through the units. The cores can function as service ducts and significantly reduce the self-weight of the slabs, maximizing structural efficiency. The cores also have a benefit in sustainability terms in reducing the volume of concrete used. Units are generally available in standard 1,200 mm widths and in depths from 110 mm to 400 mm. There is total freedom in length of units. These type of slabs are pre-casted and it is used where the construction has to be done fast. The hollow core ribbed slabs have between 4 and 6 longitudinal cores running through them, the primary purpose of the cores being to decrease the weight, and material within the floor, yet maintain maximal strength. To further increase the strength, the slabs are reinforced with 12 mm diameter steel strand, running longitudinally. This is one of the types of concrete slabs. Hollow Core Slab Installation By using tower cranes hollow slabs are inserted between the beams. The gaps between the slab is filled with screed. Screed is a concrete material generally we use 20 mm aggregate in concrete whereas in screed we use baby chips, small broken stones, as aggregates. Hollow core ribbed slabs have excellent span capabilities, achieving a capacity of 2.5 kn slash m2 over a 16 mspan. The long span capability is ideal for offices, retail, or car park developments. Units are installed with or without a structural screed, depending on requirements. Slabs arrive on site with a smooth pre-finished soffit. In car parks and other open structures, pre-finished soffits offer a maintenance-free solution. Hollow Core Slab Advantages Hollow Core Ribbed Slab not only reduces building costs it also reduces the overall weight of the structure. Excellent fire resistance and sound insulation are another attributes of Hollow Core Slab due to its thickness. It eliminates the need to drill in slabs for electrical and plumbing units. Easy to install and requires less labor. Fast in construction. No additional form work or any special construction machinery is required for reinforcing the hollow block masonry. Hollow core slab disadvantages. If not properly handled, the hollow core ribbed slab units may be damaged during transport. It becomes difficult to produce satisfactory connections between the precast members. It is necessary to arrange for special equipment for lifting and moving of the precast units. Not economic for small spans. Difficult to repair and strengthen. Hardy slab Hardy slabs are generally seen in Dubai and China. Hardy slab is constructed by hardy bricks. Hardy bricks are hollow bricks and made up of concrete hollow blocks. These blocks are used to fill portions of the slab. 
Hardy slab saves the amount of concrete and hence the own weight of the slab is reduced. This kind of slab has a more thickness 0.27 when compared with the conventional one. The method of installing hardy slab is different from normal and it is clearly explained below. The dimensions of hardy brick is 40 cm x 20 cm x 20 cm. The process of hardy blocks execution is as follows. Step 1, formwork is arranged and then shutters are fixed on the formwork. Step 2, hardy blocks are placed on the shutter with one brick gap on the entire shutter. Step 3, the gaps between the bricks are called a rib. Reinforcement is provided in a form of the beam within the gap. Step 4, after placing the rib, the plain steel mesh is placed on entire slab area resting on ribs. Step 5, now pouring of concrete is done on a slab. Where to use hardy slab? Hardy slab is used where temperatures are very high. To resist the temperature from top of the slab thickness is increased. The heat coming from walls are resisted by using special bricks which has thermocol in it. Thermocol is the best insulator of sunlight. Advantages of hardy slab Reducing slab weight by reducing the amount of concrete below neutral axis. Ease of construction, especially when all beams are hidden beams. Economic for spans 5M with moderate live load, hospitals, office and residential buildings. Improved insulation for sound and heat. Disadvantages of hardy slab If not properly handled, the hollow core ribbed brick units may be damaged during transport. Not economic for small spans. Difficult to repair and strengthen. Waffle slab Waffle slab is a reinforced concrete roof or floor containing square grids with deep sides and it is also called as grid slabs. This kind of slab is majorly used at the entrance of hotels, malls, restaurants for good pictorial view and to install artificial lighting. This a type of slab where we find a hollow hole in the slab when the formwork is removed. Firstly PVC trays, pods, are placed on shuttering then reinforcement is provided between the pods and steel mesh is provided at top of the pods and then concrete is filled. After concrete sets, the formwork is removed and PVC pods are not removed. This forms a hollow hole in it in which hole is closed at one end. The concrete waffle slab is often used for industrial and commercial buildings while wood and metal waffle slabs are used in many other construction sites. This is a one of the types of concrete slabs. Where to use waffle slab and waffle slab details. A waffle slab has a holes underneath, giving an appearance of waffles. It is usually used where large spans are required, example auditorium, cinema halls, to avoid many columns interfering with space. Hence thick slabs spanning between wide beams, to avoid the beams protruding below for aesthetic reasons, are required. 
The main purpose of employing this technology is for its strong foundation characteristics of crack and sagging resistance. Waffle slab also holds a greater amount of load compared with conventional concrete slabs. Types of waffle slabs Based on the shape of pots, PVC trays, they are classified into different types some of them are. Triangular pod system Square pod system advantages of waffle slabs Waffle slabs are able to carry heavier loads and span longer distances than flat slabs as these systems are light in weight. Waffle slab can be used as both ceiling and floor slab. Suitable for spans of 7m 16m, longer spans may be possible with post tensioning. These systems are light in weight and hence considerable saving is ensured in the framework as the light framework is required disadvantages of waffle slabs. Waffle slab is not used in typical construction projects. The casting forms or molds required for precast units are very costly and hence only economical when large scale production of similar units are desired. Construction requires strict supervision and skilled labor. Dome slab These kind of slab is generally constructed in temples, mosques palaces etc. And dome slab is built on the conventional slab. Thickness of dome slab is 0.15 m. Domes are in the semicircle in shape and shuttering is done on a conventional slab in a dome shape and concrete is filled in shuttering forming dome shapes. This is a one of the types of concrete slabs. Pitch roof slab Pitch roof is an inclined slab, generally constructed on resorts for a natural look. Compared to traditional roofing materials tile sheets used in pitch roof slab are extremely lightweight. This weight saving reduces the timber or steel structural requirements resulting in significant cost savings. Tile sheets are tailor-made for each project offering labor cost savings and reduced site wastage. And the thickness of the slab is depends on the tiles we using it may be 2.8 this is a one of the types of concrete slabs. Advantages of pitched roof type of slab Pitched roof sheds off rain water better. This slab gives you internal storage or room space. It is less likely to leak. Roof coverings are cheaper. If it is a standard pitch, building materials are more cost effective disadvantages of pitched roof type of slab. This type of slabs are not suggested for long spans. Repairs in slabs like plumbing repair or electric wiring on slabs is difficult. Slab with arches This is a type of slabs which is generally adopted in the construction of bridges. Bridges are subjected to two loads moving load from the vehicles and wind load. These slabs are adopted at a place where there is a need of redirecting wind load and if there is a long curve in direction of slab these slabs are adopted. It resists the fall of the bridge due to heavy wind load. They were originally built by stone or brick but these days these are built by reinforced concrete or steel. The introduction of these new materials allow arch bridges to be longer with lower spans. 
This is Aone of the types of concrete slabs. Post tension slab The slab which is tensioned after constructing slab is called post tension slab. Reinforcement is provided to resist the compression. In post tension slab the reinforcement is replaced with cables slash steel tendons. Post tensioning provides a means to overcome the natural weakness of concrete in tension and to make better use of its strength in compression. The principle is easily observed when holding together several books by pressing them laterally. In concrete structures, this is achieved by placing high tensile steel tendons cables in the element before casting. When concrete reaches the desired strength the tendons are pulled by special hydraulic jacks and held in tension using specially designed anchorages fixed at each end of the tendon. This provides compression at the edge of the structural member that increases the strength of the concrete for resisting tension stresses. If tendons are appropriately curved to a certain profile, they will exert in addition to compression at the perimeter, a beneficial upward set of forces, load balancing forces, that will counteract applied loads relieving the structure from a portion of gravity effects. This is Aone of the types of concrete slabs. In this type of slab, cables are tied instead of reinforcement. In steel reinforcement, the spacing between bars is 4 inch to 6 inch whereas in post tension slab the spacing is more than 2 m. Advantages of post tension slab It allows slabs and other structural members to be thinner. It allows us to build slabs on expansive or soft soils. Cracks that do form are held tightly together. Post tension slabs are excellent ways to construct stronger structures at an affordable price. It reduces or eliminates shrinkage cracking therefore no joints, or fewer joints, are needed. It lets us design longer spans in elevated members, like floors, or beams. Disadvantages of Post Tension Slab The post tension slab can be made only by skillful professionals. The main problem with using post tension slab is that if care is not taken while making it, it can lead to future mishaps. Many a times, Ignorant workers do not fill the gaps of the tendons and wiring completely. These gaps cause corrosion of the wires which may break untimely, leading to some failures unexpectedly. Pretension slab The slab which is tensioned before placing the slab is called pretension slab. The slab has same features of post tensioning. Cable suspension slab If the span of the slab is very long, then we go for cable suspension slab which is supported on cable such as London Bridge, Howrah Bridge etc. Generally, in the construction of houses for every 4M, we provide a column whereas in cable suspension slab for every 500M we provide a column. This kind of slab is provided where the length of the span is more and difficulty in building columns. The slabs are tied with cables and these cables are joined to columns. Low roof slab 
The slab which provided above the door for storage purpose is called low roof slab. Slab is closed at all ends and open at one end. This slab lies below the actual slab and above the door sill level. These types of concrete slabs are used in houses. Projected slab The slab which has one side fixed and the other side is free is called as projected slab or cantilever slab. These type of slabs are generally constructed in hotels, universities, function halls, etc. to use that area for dropping or picking up zone and for loading and unloading area. This is aone of the types of concrete slabs. Grad slab slash slab on grade. The slab which is casted on the surface of the earth is called a ground slab. This type of slab is used in the basement floor. There are two types of grade slabs. Usually after casting plinth beams. Sand is filled at an height of 0.15 m and then sand level is rammed. Then PCC is poured on sand up to a height of plinth beams. It's an economic way of constructing ground slab which use majorly in India. In high-rise buildings after constructing plinth beam the termite control is done in between the beams and then polythene sheet is laid to avoid termites inside the slab and then steel mesh is provided and concrete is filled. This costs more when compared with the previous one and requires more concrete than the first one. Sunken Slab Slab which is provided below the washrooms to hide the sewage pipes or sewerage pipes is called sunken slab. In this type, the pipes that carry water are concealed below the floor. Special care has to be taken to avoid leakage problems. After casting sewage pipes in the slab the slab is filled with coal or broken pieces of bricks. There are two types of the sunken slab. The slab which is provided below the normal floor level at a depth of 200 mm to 300 mm and filled with broken pieces of bricks is called sunken slab. Or the slab which is provided above the normal floor level at a height of 200 mm to 300 mm and filled with coal or broken pieces of bricks called sunken slab. Miscellaneous slabs Room chacha or loft This kind of chacha, slab is provided in drawing rooms and kitchen for storing house material. The usual difference between low roof slab and room chaja is low roof slab hides house material and whereas room chaja or loft doesn't hides house material they are open and provided above the door side. This is aone of the types of concrete slabs. Kitchen Slab The slab is provided in the kitchen for its platform. For placing stove and other kitchen material is called kitchen slab. It has a breadth of 0.5 m and length of wall and thickness is 2. Lintels Lintels are provided inside building above the doors and windows to redirect the top load. There are two types of lintels. Precast lintels, lintels which are manufactured in factories is called precast lintels. Cast in situ, lintels are casted at the site itself is called cast in situ lintels. 
The length of the lintel is more than door length and has a width of the wall, thickness of lintel is 0.1 m. Sunshade slab Sunshade is provided outside building above the doors and windows are called sunshade slab. The slab stops rain to come inside the building and direct sunlight. This is a one of the types of concrete slabs. Types of loads on a slab Types of loads acting on a slab include Dead load of the slab Live load Floor finish load Snow load in the case of roof slab Earthquake loads Dead load of the slab Dead load equals volume of member asterisk unit weight of materials. The dead load includes loads that are relatively constant over time, including the weight of the structure itself, and immovable fixtures such as walls etc. The roof is also a dead load. Dead loads are also known as permanent or static loads. Building materials are not dead loads until constructed in permanent position. Is, 875, Part 1, 1987 Give unit weight of building materials, parts, components. Floor finish load. This load also acts as UDL and this is calculated after assuming suitable intensity over 1 MWIDE strip. Live load on the slab Live loads are different for different buildings and structures. It keeps changing from time to time even on same structure. This is the temporary load on its intensity depends on type and occupancy of building. Dead load, self weight of the slab equals mass weight of the slab i.e. density asterisk area. As we know that density of reinforced concrete is 25 kN slash M3. Dead load equals 25 bh equals kn slash m unit here length is considered to be 1 m. Slab is designed considering to be a beam of 1 m length. Live load equals weight of humans, living beings, furniture etc equals refer is 875 for load condition in various types of buildings. I am assuming it as 1.5 kn slash m. Floor finish equals load acting due to plaster, painting, tiles etc. I am assuming it as 1 kn slash m. Total load equals DL plus LL plus FL equals KN slash M factored load equals 1.5 asterisk total load KN slash M. Load transfer mechanism in slabs. The forces transfer from slab to beams occur either in one way or in two ways. The total system completely counts on the geometrical dimensions of the slab. Slabs may be supported by columns only, in this case two-way action will prevail. If the ratio long side short side. The load transfer mechanism from floor slab to supporting elements for one-way slab and two-way slab are shown in Fig.2 and Fig.3. Lastly, Fig 4 illustrate the transfer of loads from slabs to different types of supporting elements. Minimum thickness of slabs Minimum thickness of one-way slab 
ACI 318 to 14 provides suggested minimum thickness for one-way solid slab, as provided in table, unless deflections are calculated. Table minimum thickness of one-way solid slab unless deflections are calculated. Minimum thickness, H. Simply supported one end continuous both end continuous. Cantilever members not supporting or attached to partitions or other construction likely to be damaged by large deflections. L slash 20 L slash 24 L slash 28 L slash 10 Notes, values given shall be used directly for members with normal weight concrete and grade 420 reinforcement. For other conditions, the values shall be modified as follows. For lightweight concrete having equilibrium density, WC, in the range of 1,440 to 1,840 kg m3, the values shall be multiplied by 1.650.0003 WC, but not less than 1.09. For phi other than 420 MPa, the values shall be multiplied by 0.4 plus phi slash 700. Minimum thickness of ribbed slab. ACI 318 to 14 recommend the same value of non-pre-stressed beams as provided in Table 2. Unified Building Code, UBC, specified minimum thickness of ribbed slab to be 1 twelfth distance between ribs or 51 mm. Slab thickness with embedded conduits and pipes. UBC recommended minimum thickness of slabs with embedded conduits and pipes to be 25 mm greater than total overall depth of conduits or pipes. ACI 318-14 specify that, conduits and pipes shall not be larger in outside dimension than 1-3 the overall thickness of slab, wall or beam in which they are embedded. Minimum thickness of slab on the ground UBC recommends minimum thickness of concrete floor slabs supported directly on the ground to be 89 mm, whereas BCGBC 4010A apply structural principles to residential low-rise constructions determined minimum thickness to be 100 mm. Minimum Thickness of Diaphragms UBC recommend concrete slab and composite topping slab serving as structural diaphragm used to transmit earthquake forces to be 50 mm. Minimum thickness of two-way slab ACI 318-14 provided recommendations to determine minimum thickness of slabs. Including slabs with beams, flat slabs, flat plates. Moreover, the minimum thickness of any two-way slab without interior beams should not be less than the following. For slabs without drop panel 125 mm. For slabs with drop panel 100 mm. Minimum thickness of drop panel. Sometimes drop panels used at top of columns to improve shear strength of slabs. The minimum thickness of drop panels shall be quarter of slab thickness beyond the drop.
Slab advantages homes built on slabs have less risk of flooding or leaking gases, which creates a healthier environment than homes built over crawl spaces and basements that are susceptible to flooding, gas leaks, and mold. Slabs often eliminate the need for extra steps because they are lower to the ground. Senior citizens or people with physical restrictions are attracted to one-level homes that don't have a lot of steps to climb. Slab disadvantages shifting soil, invasive tree roots and earthquakes pose serious problems for homes constructed on slabs. Any cracks in the foundation can cause major, long-term issues that are often very difficult and costly to repair. Slabs are prone to insect infestations as well. Thank you for watching. For now, please subscribe, like, share and do not forget to press bell icon.